The Golden State Warriors might just be one of the most intriguing teams going into the upcoming NBA season. With the Splash Brothers back fully healthy, Draymond hopefully back to his usual self, and Wiggins on the roster, Golden State is in a very interesting position because they hold the number 2 pick in the draft while also being one of the top contending teams in the league. The draft is less than a week away on November 18th, so let's talk about what the Warriors can do to give themselves the best chance to bring home another title. Either take a play with the pick, or look to trade it. This draft is a bit different than ones from the past few years because there's not really a consensus number one pick and there's only 4-5 to five players that deserve to be taken in the top 3. The Timberwolves have the first pick, but their needs seem to be very different than the Warriors. Minnesota lacks defense at basically every position, but have one of the best big men in the league in Carl Anthony Towns. The Warriors, on the other hand, need help at the center position and could also look to add a key piece to their bench. If they want to go the route of drafting a center, I think there's only two real choices the Warriors should be considering with the second pick, and that is James Wiseman and Onyeka Okungwu. It seems like the majority of NBA fans would choose Wiseman here because he might have a bigger impact right away and more potential in the offensive end. Many draft analysts say that he moves like a wing but has the body of a rim protector. His athleticism might just be what makes him such an intriguing prospect. Typically players of his size don't have the level of agility that he has. Wiseman is light on his feet, has a great vertical, and of course the length to go with it. As long as he has a decent understanding of where to position himself on defense, he should have all the necessary skills to be a great rim protector in the NBA. On the offensive side, his size and physical skills make him an obvious lob threat whether it be in the pick and roll or in transition. And although he only played a few games for Memphis, Wiseman has shown the ability to stretch his shot up to the 3 point line. So if the Warriors select him, how would he fit into their system? Defensively, I think he could be a great weak side shot blocker, similar to the role that Giannis has on the Bucks, although not nearly as effective, especially in only his rookie season. There have been many questions about his basketball IQ, so Golden State should be worried about having a rookie as their centerpiece of the defense. Golden State usually likes to run a high-paced offense that moves quickly in transition, resulting in a 3 from either of the Splash Brothers or an easy finish at the rim, and I think Wiseman should be able to keep up with their pace. While he was able to shoot some threes in college and has shown his range in pre-draft workouts, his shot is very slow with a long wind-up time, so I think he would only be able to get his shot off on absolutely wide open threes, which would probably be less effective than him rim running for lobs, but it's still a positive. The main question about Wiseman is that he only played 3 games at Memphis before being suspended, so is he the real deal? Leave a comment down below telling me what you think. If the Warriors are scared to take a chance on Wiseman, but still want to go after a defensive big, they could look to draft Onyeka Okungwu instead. In my opinion, I think he'll be the better defensive player right away because his basketball IQ is greater and he should be able to switch onto smaller players easier. Okungwu is a little smaller than Wiseman, standing at only 6'9", but has a similar wingspan. Like Wiseman, his athleticism is what makes him such a great prospect. He's exceptionally strong for his size, has a great vertical, and in my opinion, is even more agile than Wiseman. Defensively, he is elite both in the paint and on the perimeter, which is the reason why I think he could have more of an impact right away. Switching on to smaller players is so important in today's NBA, especially when it comes to the playoffs, and I'm sure that's what the Warriors are focused on. Offensively, he is definitely outclassed by Wiseman, but still is great in the pick and roll and his off-ball movement is among the best in this draft. Sometimes he does rely too much on his strength down low, but I think in the Warriors system, he wouldn't have too much responsibility on the offensive end for that to even be a real issue. Like Wiseman, Onyeka will be able to keep up in transition, be a constant lob threat, and is known to be a great offensive rebounder due to his off-ball movement. If I were the GM of Golden State and had to pick a center with the second pick, I would choose a Kungwu because he has a higher basketball IQ and is elite both in the paint and on the perimeter. While I do think Wiseman has more potential as an all-around player, I feel like Onyeka could be the better defensive big man for a team looking to bring home the title. However, no matter how good either is, a contending team typically doesn't want to rely on a rookie as their main source of protecting the rim. 
So let's take a look at who else the Warriors could target if they wanted to get a solid player to come off their bench or even fit into their starting rotation if things work out. The other top options of this draft are Lamelo Ball, Anthony Edwards, and Denny Avdia has been getting more and more attention recently. Anthony Edwards is the best pure scorer out of these three. He stands at 6'5 and draws comparisons to Donovan Mitchell. He has great physical skills with a combination of strength, quickness, and verticality that few guards in this draft possess. Edwards can score at all three levels, whether it be him playing above the rim, hitting pull-up mid-rangers, or shooting from deep. He's a constant threat on offense. His main issue in college was settling for shots and not taking over games when he definitely could have. However, playing on a team with talent like Stephen Clay, I really don't think that would be an issue because either he will have the keys to run the bench or be a complement scorer with the starters. On defense, Edwards has the physical tools to be very solid but hasn't shown that he has the awareness to reach that level in his rookie season. Overall, if the Warriors were to select him, they would be acquiring a pure scoring guard that might be a little streaky but should be able to break out for high scoring games from time to time. Moving on to Lamelo Ball, we have a 6 foot 7 or 6 foot 8 guard that can immediately help with his playmaking duties on any offense. He should be considered as one of if not the best passers in this draft and his court vision is on par with his older brother Lonzo. Lamelo is a solid finisher at the rim, often pulling out acrobatic layups and long range floaters that go in more times than not. He's an extremely confident shooter, which has almost been more of a flaw than a good thing because his efficiency from deep is low. I think it'll take a few seasons for him to get his shot down in the NBA, but as long as his shot selection is decent, he should be fine. On the defensive end, Ball is quick to gamble for steals and passing lanes and has very active hands with his long wingspan. His on-ball defense could use some work, but his size should help him become a decent defender once he develops. As a rookie, I don't expect him to be a good one-on-one -on -one defender by any means, but he has the tools to be an okay team defender. The main upside for Lamelo is his playmaking, size, and confidence. If the Warriors were to draft him with the second pick, I think he would be best suited coming off the bench and running the offense there. With Edwards, Golden State would be getting a pure scorer, but with Lamelo, they are getting a guy that can keep the ball moving when their stars go to the bench, which could prove to be more valuable than a good scoring guard. The last player I could see the Warriors selecting is Denny Avdia. Similar to Lamelo, he's a tall guard-like player that is known for his playmaking. Standing at 6'9", Denny has the ability to play anywhere from a guard to a power forward. Many draft analysts agree that he probably has the highest basketball IQ of this draft and elite passing to go with it. He is good at almost everything on offense, capable of hitting pull-ups, step-back threes, playing off the ball, finishing at the rim, and of course has great passing vision in transition. He has a less than average wingspan for an NBA player and has average athleticism. He isn't the quickest player, so he could have trouble getting around smaller defenders, but his size makes up for it. Denny isn't really known as a good defender, but like Lamelo, his size should help him be a decent one once he develops. If Golden State were to take him with the second pick, I think they would be getting the safer choice between the two elite playmakers in Lamelo and Denny. He would probably be used in the same way I described Ball being used by the Warriors, but I think the difference here is that Denny has a higher basketball IQ, which should be more useful in his rookie season. However, I do think Lamelo has more potential overall. If I had to choose between the three guards or wings, I would probably take Anthony Edwards because he has the physical tools to be a star and will undoubtedly provide a scoring punch off the Warriors bench, which is definitely something they need. In my opinion, if Golden State can acquire an already established defensive big plus a player with the second pick, they should go for it. While the previously mentioned players all can provide decent value in the starting rotation or off the bench, they are still untested rookies and have never played NBA basketball before. So a player that is already established defensively should be able to help this team compete even more. The issue with trading the pick is that the Warriors don't really have any cap space, so acquiring any player on a bigger contract will result in them having to move Wiggins with it. There's a ton of players that have been rumored to be on the move soon, but most of them aren't defensive bigs. The options are fairly limited, but I think there's a trade that could work out for both sides. 
The Pacers are in a weird situation right now, as they are kind of in the middle of the road in the East, which is the worst place to be in the NBA. They are neither contending for titles or tanking for draft picks. On top of this, Oladipo will probably be traded or leave in free agency next offseason, and they never really saw success playing Miles Turner and Sabonis at the same time. Because Sabonis has already proven to be an all-star caliber player and the team seems to put more focus on him, I think it would make more sense for them to move on from Turner. The Warriors could trade the second pick and Wiggins in return for Turner and a bench player such as Lamb or TJ Warren, and either can throw in an extra pick if necessary. With this, the Pacers get Wiggins, who is a good all-around player when he's engaged, and the second pick, who they could use to take whoever they want to replace Oladipo or Turner. Golden State gets a rim-protecting big and also a solid bench piece to fill out the roster. I think both sides win here, especially because Wiggins might not provide too much value to a contending team, and the Pacers roster needs a change. Other moves the Warriors could make would include moving down a few spots and acquiring a bench player, but I really think they end up trading for a good defensive big or just drafting a player with the second pick. Make sure to leave a comment down below so I can hear your thoughts on what the Warriors should do with their draft pick, and like the video if you enjoyed. As always, thank you for watching and consider subscribing with notifications on so we can continue to discuss different NBA topics.